Hello! John aka Chicken Fillets here. Now one of the JRPG series I don't really talk about too often and I really should is the Tales of series. So with this in mind, yes, we are going to talk about the five best Tales of games. Now, this is my list. This is my personal favourite. It will probably differ from yours, so you know what to do. Comment down below with what the list should be, well, in your opinion. Now, if you like JRPGs and if you like hearing a wee Scottish guy talk about them, well, please consider subscribing. Anyway, let's get cracking on. Tales of Zestria, the 15th entry in the Tales of series which was released back in 2015 for the PS3, PS4 and for PC. And in this Tales of game we follow Sorry on his hunt to defeat the Lord of Calamity. And like all Tales games it sports the fantastic linear motion battle system. And this is an absolutely gorgeous entry in the Tales of series. Now yes, I understand that this is a controversial pick being this high in this list, but it is my list and I'll give you a reason why. Now although that this may not be a fan favourite of the Tales of series, I love this title. Now if you've played Tales of Berseria, you'll know that that was actually a prequel to this game. So for me, I had played Tales of Berseria first and then I went to Tales of Zesteria now because this is set in the same world and has the same world building in it etc, well I really enjoyed this because there was connection to both games. A lot of points I was going, ah okay this makes sense and little connections here and there, I really appreciated this. Now for example if I played this first and then Tales of Berseria, my love for it may be completely different but because there was the link to Tales of Berseria, well, this is why it landed this high on the list. Tales of Hearts R, the 11th entry in the Tales of series. Now this game was originally released for the Nintendo DS in Japan in 2008 and then there was a remake which was released worldwide on the PlayStation Vita in between 2013 and 2014. In this JRPG we follow our protagonist Core Meteor, and yes that is his surname, help a girl called Kohaku restore her Spira, aka her heart. And the journey actually takes place in between two worlds. And yes with this being a Tales game it has the linear motion battle system. You'll be hearing that a fair few times. <laughs> so why has this reached number 4 in my best of list? Well. This was actually my first Tales of game, which I played. This had the perfect fit for the PS Vita and with me being a handheld gamer and loving the PS Vita, this just suited me right down to the ground. Now usually, the first game I play of a series usually ends up being my favourite. However, in this scenario, what the Tales of Hearts game did was introduce me to Tales of in general and it made me want to seek out all the Tales of games. The crying shame here is that this is stuck on the PS Vita at the moment, so I really hope that this does get a port to modern console. Tales of Eternia. Now this was originally known as Tales of Destiny 2 in the US, and had a release on the PlayStation back in 2000 and 2001, and then had a further port to the PSP between 2005 and 2006. Now this Tales of game sports the pixel art in the character models and it has 3D model backgrounds especially in the world map. Now in this Tales of game we follow Reed Herschel who is out to stop the Grand Fall from happening. And yes this title does have the linear motion battle system but compared to the other entries on this list it's not on a 3D field it is in a 2D perspective. So what was it about this game? It just really loved this setting, I loved the characters and it was different from the previous Tales games I had played before this because I was used to the more modern Tales games, the 3D games. Well this was taking a trip back in time to the early 2000s. 
To me, it really reminded me of how it felt when playing Final Fantasy VII for the first time on PlayStation 1. And it just gave me that same feeling. I don't know what it is about this game, but it just really ranks high for me. It probably does help that I like the story and the characters in this one as well. Anyway, moving on. Tales of Graces F, the 13th entry in the Tales of series. Now, this JRPG was originally released in Japan on the Nintendo Wii back in 2009, then getting a further PS3 release in Japan back in 2010, and then the rest of the world in 2012. Now, in this Tales of game, we follow our protagonist as well as he comes across a amnesiac girl known as Sophie. Now this story follows our protagonists through various stages in their life. And as always, it retains the linear motion battle system. I really need to stop repeating myself with this. <laughs> so why have I placed this Tales of Entry in this position? Now a little backstory here, I bought a PlayStation 5 well after it came out. And this was when the PS4 was just coming out. I bought a PlayStation 3 for £50 off of a friend. And then Tales of Graces F was the first JRPG that I bought for that system. And for my remembering, Tales of Graces F was actually the first time I played Tales of on a home console instead of a handheld console because I'd only played Tales of Hearts R at this point. It was something about this journey going through these characters' lives in various stages. So when you start off as children, then they get older. It just really was something I hadn't experienced in a JRPG before. Plus, there was the mystery behind Sophie, the amnesiac girl. That kept me engrossed in the story. And honestly, I think Tales of Graces F is one of the Tales games which is kind of slept on. Now, like all the other Tales of games which are released on older generation consoles and hardware, I really think that these deserve new releases, especially with the latest news that the Tales of games on PlayStation 3 has been delisted. Luckily, I still have my physical copies of the game on my shelf. Now, before we get on to my number one Tales game, well, let's have a look at some honourable mentions. Tales of Arise, the 17th mainline Tales of game, which was released back in 2021. And in this entry, we follow our protagonist, Alfin, who's on a quest for liberation and is also looking to protect his friend, Shion. Now, this is a fantastic entry in the Tales of series, but it just missed the mark for being in the top five. I do love this, but I have emotional ties with every other game that I've played. But if you've not played it, get your hands on it. It is fantastic. Tales of Vesperia, now this was originally a Xbox 360 exclusive, but I got a definitive edition release, which I played on the Nintendo Switch. Now in this fan favourite, we follow the journeys of the brave Vesperia and Yuri Lol. Now this is a fan favourite too many, but for me, I did not see why. I felt that the story really let down this game, and the ending as well made me just scratch my head and go, is that it? I didn't really see a clear villain, I didn't really think there was much to it. The gameplay was solid and I did enjoy the voice acting etc and all the tweaks that they put into the definitive edition. Don't get me wrong, Vesperia is still a great game, but unfortunately it did have parts which let me down. Tales of the Abyss, now I am talking about the Nintendo 3DS version. Now in this entry we follow our protagonist Luke, who has been targeted by a military religious organisation. Now the reason that this title hasn't got into the top 5, well, it's actually because I have not completed Tales of the Abyss, but what I did play of this game, I absolutely loved it. Now, to be honest, I can't remember why I dropped it, it could have just been, you know, general life and stuff, but it is one I am planning to go back to this year. So maybe in the future when I maybe re-look at this list, it could be in that top five. Now with everything said and done, let's have a look at the best Tales of game. Tales of Berseria, the 16th mainline entry in the Tales of games, and it is actually a prequel to Tales of Zesteria. 
and the game had a PS3 and PS4 release back in 2016 and 2017. Now in this Tales of game we follow our protagonist Velvet Crow who is out for revenge. Now this has got a absolutely dark story compared to most of Tales of games. The story in this Tales of game really sticks out. It's different from everything else because this is all about revenge. Our protagonist is essentially an anti-hero as well. And she is just completely bloodthirsty. Velvet Crow is, in general, my favourite Tales of protagonist. Everything about this character is just fantastic. Down from the writing of the character, the appearance of the character and just how she is portrayed and just everything which happens to her, you really feel for this character. I love the rich environment with this game as well and it had a fantastic soundtrack as well. And I like how this game was actually a prequel to Tales of Sesteria so when I eventually got around to playing Tales of Sesteria I was still felt I was a part of this journey with Tales of Berseria. It is once again one of these titles which I really wish got ported to the likes of Nintendo Switch. I think it would be fantastic on handheld devices. So yes, with this all in mind, the best Tales of game, well, in my opinion, is Tales of Berseria. So there we have it. Those are the five best Tales of games. Now what I want to know is, well, what are your top five Tales of games? You know what to do. Leave a comment down below. Now if you like what you're hearing and seeing on this channel, well please help me grow it by liking, sharing and subscribing. And if you want to be kept up to date with everything Chicken Fillet, well hit that notification bell. This has been John aka Chicken Fillet and until next time, tatty bye!